Hello, beautiful angels of mine. Well, you're not my angels, but I mean, you kind of are. You're my little angels. Um, anyway, <laughs> so this episode, I actually didn't really know what I was going to do for this week's episode. Um, mostly, I just wasn't feeling it. I do have like kind of several, multiple weeks ahead kind of lined out for the order of this podcast. Um, but I usually kind of move it around and tweak things or when I feel called to share a specific topic on a specific day, I'll kind of move around my schedule. Um, but today has been left blank and I just, I couldn't think of what to do. And then I woke up today and I'm like, okay, I know what I'm supposed to talk about today. Uh, so I'm keeping it real with you guys. I always, I like to keep it real. Um, and I like to share the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, so that is kind of what this topic is going to be about today, about um, kind of honoring our cycles that we go through. Um, and I'm not talking about just like our, our menstrual cycles. <laughs> I'm talking about just our emotional cycles that we go through and honoring those. And then I'm also going to share some ways to, if you find yourself kind of stuck in the the more down, the more kind of blech part of your cycle, uh, and you kind of feel stuck in that space, um, some tools and some, te some techniques that you can do to kind of help get you um, moving again, get you moving into uh, the next part of your cycle. Um, and we never have that issue when we're in like our happy, <laughs> relaxed time of our, you know, our cycle of emotions, because obviously we want to stay in that place. So we're not like, hmm, how can I work through this happy phase of my life and get to that darker shadow side? Um, <laughs> but I mean, it is important to honor the happier, more lighter uh, parts of our cycles as much as we should honor the darker, lower ones. Um, just really quick heads up too, it's freezing here in Ohio today, and so my heater keeps kicking on and kicking off and kicking on again, trying to warm up my house and keep it warm. Uh, so if there is some kind of like background interference noise, um, that is what that is, and I don't know, uh, I don't know how to edit that well, so we may just have to deal with moments of kind of quiet and then moments of some like background white noise, um, but that's okay. It's not going to be the end of the world. All right, so basically I am in one of my down phases of my cycle, um, and along with patience, I don't know if you've heard me mention this before, patience is like my ultimate number one life lesson, which I think it's a life lesson for many of us. Um, but along with patience is honoring and working with my cycles of my emotions and my feelings and just the cycles of life uh, without letting it make me feel blocked. Because I have a tendency to when I am, well, when I'm in my happy phase, um, there's always that little voice. It's like, Oh, you're not going to be happy forever. You're not going to be in this space forever. The shadow side's coming. The shadow side's coming. And I'm always like, okay, yeah, thank you. I'm aware that after the high comes the low. <laughs> um, and then when I'm in the low, there's always this kind of, um, even though I know, I know that every time I've been in my low phase, uh, I get through it and I get back into that uh, happier, lighter phase. So, I don't know why every time I let it get to me that like, oh my gosh, am I ever going to make it out of this shadowy depths of <laughs> where I'm at? And the answer is yes. Um, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm at in more, and it's funny because, uh, you know, I'm laughing and I'm smiling um, because, you know, the, when you're in a, a shadowy place, um, it's not necessarily always just like tears and crying and you can't function. and um, you know, like right now, like I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good, but there is still that just like underlaying, um, like almost a sadness or something that just kind of like underlaying, I, I don't really know how to put it into words. Um, but if you've ever felt this way, which I'm sure you have because you're a human being, uh, you probably know what I'm talking about. Like I feel fine. I, I can function. I can laugh. I still find things funny. If something funny happens, I'm laughing, but there's still, it's almost like, um, it's almost like you're wearing like a backpack of like the blues <laughs> or a backpack of like a little bit of sadness and a little bit of like, eh. <laughs> um, that you're carrying around with you. So like, you're still doing your thing and you're still like living life, but there's just like this, you're just carrying around this, bleh. um, and that's where I'm at right now. So 
let's talk about honoring our cycles. We need to honor our cycles because we go through them for a reason. Just like the earth itself has cycles and seasons, we ourselves have cycles and seasons. And it's important to honor them. You need to honor the shadowy stuff as much as you honor the light stuff. And honestly, the shadowy stuff is usually where most of our growth and transformation occurs. And then we emerge out of that like a cocoon. We emerge as a beautiful new butterfly and we get to enjoy the sunshine and fluttering around with our other butterfly friends. And life is great and we're enjoying the, um, the difficulty of the transformation and now we get to enjoy life and be happy. And then it happens again. Um, so it's really important to honor the cycles and not fight them so much. The more we try to fight them, um, the the more difficult it kind of becomes. It's it's one of those we need to feel what we're feeling because um, it'll never go away. <laughs> so some of us, and I've been very good at this too, especially in the past, very good at shoving down and completely ignoring and blocking out and you know trying to self-medicate too um you know the pain and the discomfort and i don't want to think about this and putting on blinders and you can fool yourself for a little while with that but then eventually you come back around to that cycle and then it's even more difficult than before when you don't face your the things that are making you feel down and ugh, the if you don't face those the next time around, it then becomes even more. And it just starts to become more and more and more and more until it's just like slamming you in the face and you have to deal with these more shadowy, um, maybe uncomfortable feelings. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we need to honor our cycles uh, is, is we need to deal with our stuff, really. <laughs> um, another reason is because that's how we grow. Like I said, you know, we, we, go and we deal through, we deal with the stuff. So we're facing our stuff and then we're dealing with it. And then we emerge, hopefully having learned something or um, healed something or just even knowing more about ourselves really. Cause sometimes that's all our, uh, our self wants is to be heard. Um, because a lot of us are not listening to ourselves. We're not listening to our bodies. We're not listening to our minds. We're not listening to our spirits. And a lot of the times when we get kind of shoved into these uh, lower, darker periods, it's because we're not listening. We're not listening to our mind, body, and spirit. Um, and it's kind of basically like, mayday, mayday, mayday. Like, we need to listen. Like, you need to listen to us. Something is out of balance. Like, we need to be heard. And so it like shoves you into this dark hole, kind of forcing you to then it's just you and your emotions. It's just you, your mind, your body, and your spirit, and you have to listen. Um, and it's almost like as soon as we just even acknowledge what it is that we're feeling inside, so, you know, so maybe we're feeling like unworthiness. As soon as we even just acknowledge like, okay, I'm feeling unworthy, that starts the healing and that starts the transformation and that starts us on the upswing of the cycle and moving out of the, the darkerness, darkerness? Moving out of the darkness into more of the light. Um, so it just, it gives us a chance to listen to our bodies. Uh, you also want to listen to your body when you are in like more of a lighter, airy, sunny uh, part of your cycle. You want to listen to your body and mind and spirit then as well. Um, but especially when you go into those, into the more darker, quiet times, that's an excellent time to really check in with yourself. Um, so that being said, there are times where it can be really hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It can be really hard to be like, okay, I know this is just a cycle and I'm going to move through it and life is going to be peachy keen, sunshine and rainbows eventually. Um, it can be really difficult, especially because some of our more shadowy cycles are longer than others. Some of them are shorter than others. So when you're in a particularly longer stretch of living in the shadows, it can feel, you can really start to get comfortable in those shadows almost. And just like, well, this is where I live now. I, I live in this dark hole and that, that is what it is. Um, <laughs> and it can start to feel a little like there's, there, I'm never going to live out in that sunshine again. This is where I live. Um, but that's when we really need to work through it. So I'm going to share some ways, some tools and some techniques that I have found personally that help me through the more shadowy periods. And I do want to um, make clear though here, using these tools and techniques, it's not to put the blinders on and it's not to kind of like shove everything down and like rush ourselves out of the shadowy period. That's not the intent at all. The intent of these tools and techniques is to work with the shadowy uh, cycles, to work with the shadowy parts, um, to kind of either give us comfort 
while we're in that shadowy period um, and ways to also kind of help us acknowledge and work through whatever it is that we're needing to work through and transform while in the shadowy phase. Um, it's not about, you know, ignoring the shadow and not facing our stuff. Cause remember I already said, we need to face our stuff. Um, so your, your tools and your techniques should never be putting blinders on and rushing through the shadow. It needs to be kind of like, I just got the image of when you're a little kid and you would wake up in the middle of the night from a bad dream or there's monsters in your room. And it's like, okay, do I put the blanket over my head and just kind of like deal with it? <laughs> or do I run out of my room to my parents like as quick as I can out of the shadows into the light of my parents' bedroom? Um, it's kind of like that, you know, we kind of got to use what we got, use our blanket and deal with it. <laughs> um, all right. And then also I do want to say, because I am somebody that has dealt with major depression my, basically my entire life. Um, I was officially diagnosed at 18, but I mean, I definitely had depression before then. And I think that's also part of the reason why when I do get into my lower, uh, more shadowy phases, I'm kind of like, oh gosh, it's, it's a little more scary if you are somebody who has dealt with any sort of like mental health stuff. It is a little more scary when you enter into those more shadowy periods, because if you are somebody who deals with like depression and stuff it's easy to get stuck in those shadowy places. It's easy to, like I said, like feel like you're in that hole and you can't see the light at the end of that tunnel. Um, and then also I think that's why when I am in my more happy phases, there's always that little voice that I, I have worked a lot on and that little voice is very quiet now, but there's still that little voice of like, oh, the shadow side's coming, the shadow side's coming. Um, luckily my shadowy stuff has been usually not so difficult as much anymore because I know how to work with it and work through it. And I've also now faced a lot of my shadows, faced a lot of those monsters in the dark. So there's not so much for me to get stuck in when I'm in the shadowy cycle. Um, it's a lot easier for me to move through, but sometimes like right now, which I am totally using the tools and the techniques that I'm going to share with you guys. Um, right now I'm, I'm really having to like, okay, well, what the hell's going on? Clearly something's going on. Clearly there's something I need to work through or transform or whatever. Um, so yeah, sometimes your cycles are just a little more bleh. Um, but I do want to say if you are at the point where you're in your shadowy part of your cycle and like you really can't see a way out you can't see a light at the end of the tunnel because even if it's difficult to see that light at the end of the tunnel it's almost like you kind of know it's there even if you can't see it but if you are in your shadowy phase and you absolutely cannot see an end to your shadowy phase or even feel an end to your shadowy phase um, or you're in your shadowy phase and it's completely affecting your life like you can't go to work you can't do you know take care of your house you aren't showering you're not eating um, you know, especially if you're thinking like negative thoughts about yourself or others, you know, harming others or yourself, obviously please seek actual like medical professional help. Um, at that point, you can always use th these tools and these techniques with medical help. When I was seeing my therapist, I was doing that. I was doing, using all sorts of spiritual and holistic tools along with speaking with a professional. So if you are at that point in your shadowy uh, cycle or phase, no shame at all, reach out to a professional. And I always, always say, if you're even considering the tiniest bit of maybe I should talk to a professional, you need to go talk to a professional. <laughs> that, that goes, plays back into the listening to our mind, body, and our spirit. If even one little ounce of you is even halfway considering seeking a professional, you need to go talk to one. Um, and you don't necessarily have to be at like your absolute lowest low or in your shadow cycle or your shadow phase to seek a professional. Even if you're in your more like happy rainbow phase and you're like, you know what? I, I kind of feel like maybe I should talk to somebody. You need to go talk to somebody. There's no shame in seeking professional help. There's no shame in talking to a therapist. Um, it can literally save your life and be life transforming and amazing. And you need to seek help when you need to seek help. So I do want to say that. Um, because I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not a professional, so I'm not saying that these tools and these techniques are going to cure you or, you know, make everything go away or heal you or diagnose you or whatever. Um, 
I'm telling you to go get professional help. So <laughs> it's been said here. Now my little public service announcement is over. All right, so these tools and techniques and stuff are stuff that I personally use. Um, some of them are like, duh. Um, actually, a lot of them might be. <laughs> All right, so first and foremost, remember, like I said, these are to work with your shadow phase. These aren't to just push you out of your shadow phase and not have you deal with it. These are more things that will help to comfort you or to help you maybe um, access your feelings and your emotions. So first I have these happy drops. Uh, from Calm A Mama, and I'll link uh, these companies too. So these are Happy Drops from Calm A Mama, and it's an herbal supplement, and it's got lovely like flower essence and flower extracts and stuff in it. Um, and these are just basically, you just drop them into your mouth, which I'll do right now. You just do like three or four drops in your mouth, and I think they taste great. And they do taste like florally a little bit and sweet. Um, and these are good to just kind of help to elevate your mood a little bit. And again, we're not elevating our mood to get out of the shadow. We're elevating our mood more so we can work with the shadow. Because depending on how, um, I don't want to say severe your shadow phase is, um, but depending on the level of your shadow phase, you might need a little bit of help. You might need a little bit of happy drops to kind of give you enough uh, happy feelings to do the work. Because if we are at the point where we're like, I just want to lay in bed. I don't want to do the work. I don't want to deal with any of this. That's not helpful. That's about as helpful as putting the blinders on and running through it. So using things like the little happy drops and these oils that I'm going to share with you, um, it, it just kind of helps to get you through it, to help you work through it. Um, all right. So yeah, the happy drops, which call my mama, this is not sponsored by them or anything. I just, I love this company. Um, <laughs> call my mama happy drops and then oils. Oils are so freaking excellent. Oh, I could talk about oils all damn day long. Um, but essential oils, they literally, they're not just this weird placebo thing because crystals, which we're going to get into, um, some people like to argue that they're just a placebo effect, which even if it is a placebo effect, if it works, who cares? That's my theory. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, essential oils literally work like on a scientific level. <laughs> like they can scientifically prove that essential oils help us. Um, when we smell an essential oil, it instantly activates um, different parts of our brains to release certain chemicals and certain hormones. Um, that's why when you smell a certain smell, it can instantly make you feel you know, happy or comforted or bring back childhood memories of when you were happy and comforted. Um, essential oils are amazing. And then not only that, but when you use them um, physically, like on your body, like mix it with some coconut oil and rub it into your body, um, the molecules of essential oils are so tiny that they can permeate your bloodstream and they enter through your entire body and they literally can help balance your body. Um, different oils do different things. So some of my favorite oils to use when I'm in my more shadowy phase are more of the uplifting, um, uplifting oils which obviously, because I need a little help being uplifted, um, which it's funny because when I'm in my more light and airy phase, I use more of the grounding oils, more of the oils to kind of, I don't want to say bring me down, but to kind of like keep me, keep me grounded because I tend to go, uh, you know, I go really into my shadows and then I go really into my light. Uh, so the grounding oils help to keep me, you know, my feet on the ground while my head's in the clouds. Um, but so when you're in your shadow phase, um, any sort of citrus oils will be amazing. My particular absolute favorite, it's like the instant I just open this bottle and I smell it, I instantly start to feel better and I feel like courageous and like, all right, I can do this. Let's, let's look at this shadow. What is going on? I'm ready to face this. I'm ready to deal with this. And that is this oil citrus bliss. It's from doTERRA. And again, I'll have links in the descriptions. Um, but it is a blend of basically like all of the amazing citrus oils and a little bit of vanilla. If you put vanilla in a blend, like I, I love it and I drool. It smells like a freaking creamsicle. Oh my God, I just can't even take it. I love it. Like I smell it and I just am instantly, I feel better. Um, and yeah, it's, and that's what citrus oils do also. They help to give you um, like motivation and courage and vigor. So 
not only are they helping to uplift your mood, but it's making it so you want to deal with your crap. You're wanting to deal with the shadows. So that is an excellent oil. Um, you may be somebody who does need a little more balance, a little more kind of um, a, a security feeling, a grounded, secure feeling when you are in your shadow phase. And so for that, some of the tree oils would be really excellent. Like white fur would be good. Um, cypress is good. Frankincense is excellent. Um, but then there's also this blend from doTERRA called Balance. And this is, oh my God, another one I adore. And this one just helps to make you feel comforted and to feel, um, to feel secure. And that's the thing too with these oils. They, they literally have, like it makes, like the citrus oils literally like pump out the good the good stuff in your brain to make you feel good. Um, the oils in the balance blend literally like make your brain make you feel balanced. It balances your your energy and your feelings. Um, it's it's different than I'm, I don't want to compare these at all to like pharmaceuticals because they're not <laughs> at all. But I was just thinking that I'm like, so you put this oil on you and it like changes your chemicals. It, it's not so much quite like that, but. Anyway, and actually pharmaceuticals, side note, are basically uh, man-made synthetic versions of the makeup of plants and oils, because um, our original medicines were plants and oils, and then man was like, hey, I found a way to make a synthetic version of what that plant does, and now I can put a patent on it and sell it to you. Um, so just a little bit of history. And then finally, the final oil is jasmine essential oil or rose or geranium. Any of the floral oils are really good. They're excellent for the, um, the heart chakra and to just kind of help give you a little bit of more um, love and compassion for yourself because obviously you're going through a shadowy phase. You want to have a little extra love and compassion for yourself while you're dealing with these things. So um, floral oils, it's kind of hard to say, floral oils flowery oils, there we go, <laughs> are, um, are really good for that. So those are my favorite types of oils to use when I'm in my shadowy phase. And speaking of flowers, keep flowers near you. <laughs> keep flowers near you because it's almost when you're staring at a bouquet of flowers, how can you feel really bad? You can't. <laughs> They're beautiful and they remind you of the sunshiny sun times. So when you are in that shadow phase, keep flowers near you because it will help to remind you, no, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Obviously flowers need light and sunshine to grow. And if you think about it, we're gonna get really like uh, deep here. Um, flowers, they start out in the dark. They start out in the muck and the dirt and then they grow and they have to work to push through that dirt and that darkness to then enter transformed as a flower into the sunlight. So they can also serve as like a metaphor reminder of you yourself that you will push through this darker phase and come out transformed into the sunlight. How do you like that? Um, <laughs> so keep flowers near you. That's really important. Um, another thing that you can do is Crystals, keep crystals near you. So here's the thing with crystals and just like oils too. None of these things are going to just magically fix you. None of these things are just going to, it's not like you're gonna rub an oil on you and hold a crystal and you're gonna be like, oh my God, that's that's why I'm in this shadow phase right now and that's what I need to deal with. Um, it can help with that, but unless you're willing to like put in the work and actually like, okay, so this is what's going on with me. Um, how can I work through this? How can I deal with this? Like you need to put in the work the crystals and the oils and stuff are just there to kind of help you. So like the flowery oils, if you realize, okay, because I mentioned self-worth earlier. So if you realize, all right, I'm kind of feeling in my shadow phase right now because I'm feeling unworthy. I don't, I don't feel like I'm worthy of, you know, happiness or love or whatever. Um, once you make that realization, you then need a little extra love and support. So that's where like the flowery oil comes in to help give you and um, elicit those feelings of feeling loved and supported and compassionate towards yourself. Uh, that's what like rose quartz would do. So you could pair the flowery oil with some rose quartz and do some meditating on feeling worthy and feeling um, that self-love for yourself. So see what I mean? You kind of need to like do the work too. You can't just like hold a crystal. And I mean, some changes, some benefits may happen from just holding a crystal, but unless you actually kind of work with that crystal with the intent to do something, it's not going to do a whole lot. 
Um, but so rose quartz is one of my favorites to use when working with the shadow stuff. Cause like we said, a lot of the time, some stuff that we don't want to face or deal with comes up. And so we need that extra love and that extra support. Um, so rose quartz is really good. Another one is smoky quartz. Smoky quartz helps to keep us feel grounded, um, and secure. And it's also a really good, um, transmuter, energy transmuter. So smoky quartz is really good at taking kind of the more negative feelings and helping to kind of flush them out. And that's what we want. We want to work with our more bleh feelings um, and then kind of transmute them into more, you know, work with our weaknesses, basically. Work with our, what is the quote? I, I wish I could think of it. It's a quote from Oprah. Oprah. <laughs> a quote from Oprah. A quote from Oprah. Um, what is it? Turn your wounds into wisdom. Smoky quartz is excellent for that. Smoky quartz will help you turn your wounds into wisdom. So this is a really good one to keep around you when you're dealing with the more shadowy feelings. Um, and then another one is aura quartz. Really any kind of aura quartz. I particularly like the angel aura quartz. This helps to call in that angelic energy to help um, wrap you with the love and the support and the guidance that you need. This can help you to um, also to maybe see what it is that you're needing to deal with. If you're kind of like, well, I'm not sure what I need to be dealing with, uh, aura quartz can help you to kind of illuminate what it is that maybe you should be facing and dealing with. It's also another very uplifting stone, so it will help. And I mean, it's gorgeous. If you've never seen aura quartz, like just Google images of aura quartz, especially I love the angel aura. Um, I mean, it's kind of like, how can you hold this crystal and look at it and not feel happy? It's like with the flowers. <laughs> so if you put some citrus oils in your diffuser, you hold an aura quartz and you look at some flowers, like it's kind of hard to not feel like, all right, I got this. I can take care of things. <laughs> so those are the crystals that I like to use. And then there's two more things or three things. Um, I also wanted to say, get outside. <laughs> I keep looking over at my window. Um, even when it's cold, because like I said, here in Ohio, it's effing freezing. And there's like seven inches of snow outside right now. Here in Ohio, we have just all winter, it's like gray skies constantly, um, which that can really make you feel down. I'm especially, I know that's part of the reason why I am in this more down phase. Um, so not all of our down phases are necessarily because we have something pressing to deal with. Um, Sometimes it's just our circumstances and our surroundings that can put us into that more, um, more hibernated hermit phase. <laughs> but even if you don't feel like you have anything like really to work on when you're like plunged into that, you probably have something you could be working on. So use that as an opportunity to check in with your mind, body, spirit, and see what you could work on. Um, but anyway, so getting outside is really important. Even if you just go outside for five minutes and just like bundle yourself up and stand outside for five minutes, it really, really helps. Even if it's cloudy skies, there is still that sunlight coming um, onto you. And sunlight with the vitamin D from the sun is really important and good for um, balancing our moods. And then also just breathing in that fresh air and looking at the sky and seeing the earth. It can help remind us that we're connected to the earth, that we are supported by mama earth. Um, so definitely get outside. If you can go for a walk, that's even better because getting our bodies moving is really, really good. Um, get yourself moving. Even do like five minutes of yoga. Um, I personally, because it's so cold, I don't go outside all the time to walk. Um, I'll walk for like a few minutes <laughs> and then I turn around, come back in, or I'll go outside with my dog and kind of run around with him for a minute. Um, but I literally will run in place at home. So I'll be working on something and it's like every 30 minutes I'll get up and I'll do a bunch of jumping jacks or run in place for a minute, anything to kind of get my energy going. That is really, really, really good to do. Even when you don't feel like you want to move, that's probably when you should get up and kind of force yourself to move. It literally um, gets your energy moving. It literally like shakes up the energy and it can help bring stuff up, like the stuff that is, you're pushing down physically moving your body can move that energy up. And so then you can deal with it. Um, and then of course the, the traditional fuel your body with healthy stuff. Um, it, it tends to be when we, we are feeling more down, we want those more comfort foods. <laughs> At least I know that's what it is for me. Um, but so it's important to remember, you know, drink a green juice, eat some fruit, eat some vegetables, um, take care of yourself, make sure you're drinking water, all that kind of thing. So then my last two, I feel like I'm like, blah, 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 blah but it's because I feel like I have so much information and I didn't want this to be like a two hour long episode. So I'm trying to like get it all in. Um, another tool that you can use is cards, cards. Oh my God, you guys, I love cards, crystals, oils, cards. 
they're, they're, they're my babes. I love them. Um, cards are excellent for, especially if you're feeling like, okay, I'm here, I'm in my shadows. I know there's something I need to be dealing with, but like, what is it? <laughs> I've done some meditating, nothing's coming up. I've used some oils to kind of help things going. I've done, done jumping jacks to get my energy moving and like nothing's coming up. That doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have anything to work on because we're humans, we're complex. We always have something to work on. Even if you feel like you have worked through everything, you're always having new experiences and you're always growing and reacting to these experiences differently. So you always have something to work on. It may not be like major, but it's something that you can be working on. Um, cards are excellent to pull out at that time because then you can just shuffle the cards and ask yourself a question like, you know, what is this shadow phase trying to teach me? And you can pull a couple cards and see what comes up. You can use tarot cards or oracle oracle cards, angel cards, whatever. Um, and then you can even do that too for like, okay, so we'll just go back to the worthiness um, example. All right, so I'm feeling unworthy. What can I do to help make myself feel worthy? And pull a couple cards for it. So just ask those kinds of questions and see what comes up. It can really, really be helpful. Um, and then finally is journaling. Journaling is so, so, so important. So ideally, you'll be kind of combining all of these things into one. You know, you may be putting your citrus oils into your diffuser. You are uh, putting your balancing oils on your feet. Um, you've gone outside in the morning and breathed in the fresh air. And then you've pulled some cards and you pulled some crystals. Um, that's an excellent time to then pull out your journal and start writing your feelings out, writing your thoughts. Even if you don't have like complete sentences to write, because sometimes we just have like, feelings that we're feeling. So just get those out. Just start getting the feelings and the thoughts and everything out of yourself. Um, and that's where like you can hold the rose quartz while you're journaling to help remind yourself and give yourself that love and compassion. Um, but really journal and talk it out. It's almost like you're talking to um, another person and it can be really helpful because when we just sit with our thoughts, that's where they are. They're just sitting there and they're just in our mind and they're just in our energy field. And until, <clears throat> excuse me, until we journal them and get them out, um, or speak into a therapist too. Um, <clears throat> it, they just kind of stay there. <laughs> they just stay in our mind. So journaling helps to literally get the thoughts out and onto paper so you can see them. And it helps too, when you start writing out your feelings, um, and your thoughts, it can kind of help you when you're reading it as you're writing it you can kind of then see things from a different angle and a different perspective. <clears throat> Excuse me. So journaling is really, really great at helping you to like work through things or maybe figure out why you're feeling a certain way, um, what you're ready to release, how you can work through it. Even if you can't at that point figure out exactly what it is you're working through or how you're going to work through it or why you're feeling this way in the first place. You know, Susie Q in third grade said this to me and that's why I don't feel worthy. Um, you may not necessarily know that, but just even remember it goes back to acknowledging our mind, body, and spirit and what it's trying to tell us. So even just writing it out and writing out, I don't feel worthy. I don't know why I don't feel worthy, but I don't feel worthy. And that makes me feel this way. Um, just getting that out, you're acknowledging that feeling and you're listening to your mind, body, and your spirit. And you're already, whether you're aware of it or not, you're already subconsciously working through those old beliefs and you're subconsciously starting to heal and move forward. And more often than not, when you acknowledge, okay, this is why I'm feeling and it's making me feel this way. You know, I feel unworthy. I feel afraid. I don't feel confident. And it's making me feel this way. It's impacting my life this way. Just even that little act is so powerful and can really make all the difference. So, all right. I feel like I've talked your ear off sufficiently. Um, so yeah, remember it's important that we feel our feelings, the good and the bad. It's important that we sit with our cycles wherever we are on our cycles and honor them. Um, it's important to remember when we do need to ask for some help, some additional professional help. It's important to know that. And tools, no matter what you use, tools and techniques and activities, they're not going to really do a ton unless you are putting in the work and you're um, 
giving yourself moments to have the realizations and work through things. They're excellent and they will help you and they will support you, but that's what they're there for. They're there to support you. Um, they're not there. Your, your oils and crystals and the flowers aren't there to do the work for you. They're there to kind of help get you going and to help support you. Um, but they're not going to do the work for you. So that is what I wanted to share with you guys today. And, uh, let me know, reach out to me on social media, Sharice Healing Moon on Instagram. Um, you can comment in our private Facebook group, Healing Moon Sacred Space. Uh, reach out to me. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are. How are you feeling? I know it's winter here in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, how are you feeling this winter? What do you do when you're feeling in a funk? Uh, reach out to me. Let me know. And if you like this episode, feel free to share it out with your friends and family. You know, you never know who it could benefit. And please subscribe and review. And I appreciate it. All right. Peace and love, everybody. Bye.